Welcome. Today being Sunday, I thought it might be interesting not only to look at what has happened in the last 24 hours, but also what has happened all this week. But first, have there been any flares recently? From the GOES X-ray plot, we see that we have had just one mid-level sea flare, which Noah tagged to be from region 1176. So things seem to be quieting down somewhat. But the lull may only be temporary, and we have several new sunspot regions on the visible disk at the moment. 1176 is still the biggest and most likely to flare, but with the return of the old region 1166 over the East Limb, we are likely to get more flaring, as that was a very productive active region. It will not be labelled as 1166, but probably 1182. 1179, as I predicted, no longer has any spots, but is also rotating off the West Limb. To its south, the region has developed with some new small spots, but is not numbered yet. Just south of 1177, there is a small spot emerged that may become a numbered region soon. And sunspots are only one minor aspect of the solar magnetic field, so let's take a look at the magnetograms from the Solar Dynamics Observatory and see how they have changed over the last week. The week started with some large regions rotating off the disk, so we were faced with the quiet side of the sun for a while. Soon thereafter, a new region started to appear over the east limb. You can even see the emergence of a new region in the middle of the disk, here. The main news of the week, though, was that region 1176 in the south has produced several M flares and a whole host of C flares originating from somewhere near the leading spot. In Helium-2 at 3.04 angstroms, which is characteristic of about 50,000 degrees Kelvin, we can see the cool material in the solar atmosphere, particularly the filaments and prominences which appear to be very dynamic in these movies. Spectacular, isn't it? Especially when you consider that little symbol in the top left corner is about the size of our Earth. The Corona movie confirms that Region 1176 is the one guilty of producing all the flares. Now let's take a look at the large-scale corona. To look at that, we use a device called a coronagraph. It produces a solar eclipse by placing an occulting disk over the bright part of the sun and looking at the light scattered off the gases surrounding the sun. The denser the gases, the more light that is scattered. So we're looking at it effectively at a density map here. In the movie, I have superimposed images from the two Lasco coronagraphs on the SOHO spacecraft, which will be shown here in red and blue. Now watch for the explosions. Follow the arrows.
looking at the whole sun, we still have some more regions to appear over the east limb. It'll be interesting to see how active the old region 1166 is when it gets further onto the disk. The sunspot number has increased to a fairly respectable 127. The solar wind speed is quite low, at just over 300 kilometers per second. Geomagnetic activity is still low. Now for the forecast. Solar activity should remain moderate, with a chance of small to medium-sized flares, but the chance of getting an X-flare will be quite low. There's an outside chance of a weak aurora, but personally I wouldn't bet on it. The solar activity continues to lag behind the forecast levels for the solar cycle, and some believe that implies a later and lower solar maximum. I'm adopting a wait-and-see attitude on that particular thorny problem. Keep safe. Bye for now.